Hi guys, this video is going to help you understand the basics of a DSLR camera. It'll show you how to use it, how to make the most of the studio we have at Thomas Rotherham College, and give you some tips and tricks on how to shoot your photos. Before we get started, the first step is to check to see if the battery is in the compartment by opening the battery door at the bottom of the camera. If the battery is not in the camera, it won't turn on. It may be somewhere in the box, so make sure you check the case. Switch it on by flicking the switch to on. Next, take off the lens cap by pinching it together in the center and removing it from the lens. Turn the dial so that the green square aligns with the white line. This is the full auto mode. In this mode, the camera decides all of the settings for you and all you have to do is point the camera and take the photo. There are two ways in which you can see the subject you are going to capture. You can even look through the viewfinder or you can press the button with a little camera icon on it. It has a red dot next to it. This will enable you to view your subject on the screen instead of using the viewfinder. Use whichever you prefer or whichever is the easiest for you. If you are wanting to zoom in or out on your model, Turn the ridged part of the lens left or right. This will zoom in, making you seem closer to the model, or zoom out, making you seem further away. Your photos need to be in focus so that they are not blurry. To focus, make sure the switch on the left hand side of the lens is on AF. This means the camera is in auto focus and will make the camera focus for you. In order to make the camera do this, press the shutter button down halfway this will enable the camera to focus on what you're pointing it at. Once everything is in focus, the camera will beep. Make sure you keep the button pressed down halfway until the camera does this. Press the button all the way down to take your photo. If the switch on the lens is in MF, this means it is in manual focus. You'll need to use the ring on the end of the lens to focus on the model. This means the camera will not beep to notify you when the model is in focus. Remember, you need to press the shutter button down all the way in order to actually take the photo. When you are on a shoot, you can either hold the camera in your hands or use a tripod. To set up a tripod, start by opening the clasps on the tripod legs and extending them. Remember to close the clasps again to lock the legs in place. To reposition the head of the tripod, twist the pan handle to move the camera. To lock the camera into the tripod, flick open the lever and slide out the plate. Screw this into the bottom of the camera. To lock it back in place, slide the plate back in and the lever should click back into place. If you want more height, turn the crank handle and the neck will extend. Are you ready to start taking photographs for your magazine? It is recommended to take them at a portrait orientation. This is to ensure that your photo fits onto a page of your magazine without having to crop it or distort it like you would if it was in landscape. Popular shots for magazine front covers and mid shots. This often means that the model has their photograph taken from the waist up, just like these examples. Mid shots would be used to show off the model's face as well as their outfit. If you're going to use a mid shot, make sure that the model's head is not cut off at the top. If a close-up was used, like this one, where just the face is shown, it's more personal and focuses more on who the model is and not what they're wearing. Our studio is located at the very top of the English block in Woodhurst. If you need to use it, come and see Brit or Sam to book it out. You'll need to ask us to unlock it too, as it's kept locked for health and safety reasons. Our studio includes two different coloured backdrops, black and white, and you can choose whichever you would like to use for your photographs. There are an array of different lights to use. Some give out very bright, natural looking lights, others use warmer, more orange light. Have a go with them all and see which you think looks best for your photos. Lighting is one of the most important things to get right when you're taking a photo and can often cause shadows to appear behind your model. To prevent this, make sure your model 
takes a couple of steps forward away from the backdrop. This will disperse the shadow and make it less noticeable. You can experiment with a lot of different lighting. Try moving the lights around. Two studio lights slightly in front at either side of your model will provide a lot of bright lighting and will ensure your model is well lit. On the other hand, just one studio light close to the side of your model will only light up half of your model's face, creating an edgy, creative look. Please ensure that you switch off all the lights. Turn them off at the wall and unplug them before you leave the studio. Once you've taken some photos, you're probably going to want to have a look back and see what they look like. To do this, press the play button and it'll take you to the last photo that you took. Press the left or right buttons on the wheel and this will let you cycle through all the photos that you've taken. When you're happy with the images that you've shot and are ready to put them onto the computer to start editing them, plug the smaller end of the lead into the camera here and the USB end into the computer. The lead is located in the camera case. Make sure the camera is switched on, then go to computer, find the camera's name and double click on it. Double click on SD, then DCIM, then the next folder that appears after that. It may read Canon 100, but it depends which camera you are using. Your images will then load up. Save them to your documents or on a memory stick, or both, to make sure that they're backed up. If you ever need to charge the camera, open the battery door and take out the battery. There is a battery charger in your camera case, so place the battery in, plug the charger into the wall. Depending on the camera you've been given, it may also come with a separate plug as well as the charger. Pull out the prongs from the back of the charger and push the adapter on. Now you can plug this into the wall and charge your battery. So there we have it. That was everything you need to know when starting out with the DSLR. If you have any further questions, come and see Sam or Britt.